Howdy, I'm Jason Wilson. Um, I run a little small R&D lab at MapQuest right now, and some of you guys probably know me from years and years ago, um, founder of Playshell, co-founder of Playshell. So I'm going to talk today about location-aware brain cells and how they relate to navigation and memory. So this thing is the hippocampus. Um, it's a Greek word that literally is seahorse, and I think you can tell why. And what happens here is this part of the brain that has to do with episodic memory and um, spatial memory, how we get around. And when people get Alzheimer's disease, that's kind of like what goes wrong. So there's a few kinds of cells in here. Some of them are called grid cells. And our brain has a three-axis based grid system. So as we're walking around, these, these certain cells, they kind of just pop off, like boom, okay, there's a node, there's another node. It's just laying out this framework. Um, there's these other kind of cells called border cells. So anytime we come to the edge of something, whether it's physical or kind of conceptual, these cells are firing off and they're building up this um, interrelated connection with the, with the grid cells. There are also these things called place cells and they really are kind of like our semantic notion of place now. There's some big ones, some small ones, some overlap, some are contained within other ones. It's just like what you consider a place, what's an important area to remember. Um, but those, those places don't have hard defined edges. Um, really we're operating in these overlapping place fields. So the, it's not one cell per place. It's basically a, a handful, kind of a cocktail of cells that are firing off. And they, they kind of fire more and more robustly as you get towards the center of one of those fields. And if you, you look all the way on the very far right side, you see some are firing on the upslope of the brainwave and some on the downslope of the brainwave, and that's just within a fraction of a second. It's basically a picture of leaving one area and entering another one. So basically places are not really points in our brain. They're really just parts of a line. They're really just parts of our navigation system. Um, and you're always connected to this line. It's all about, you know, finding food again. So when you get to like an alternate routes kind of system, you're at a fork in a road, your brain, to help you decide which path to take, it's going to run the memorized scenarios in like firing those, those routes and kind of what you found. And at the end of each route, it's rerunning them in reverse order like seven times over really quick. So you get to the end of a hallway that maybe you have or have not ever been down, it's like burnishing that into your memory. And that process is called consolidation. So we've been doing that our whole lives and we have this sort of massive routing engine in our brains um, that's all just based kind of on a sensation, um, kind of a musical analogy, kind of, you know, these electrical pulses that are going. So, you know, we end up, the, the route itself, it, you may not necessarily have the most, it's not, it's not optimized for, for uh, efficiency, but it's optimized for sort of meaning and mem memory. Um, you know, it might, it might mean something to you. And then those routes can kind of become objects. So there's these studies um, of the cab drivers in London who are notorious for being super good navigators and kind of memorizing the whole city. And the longer they've been doing it, the longer they've been burnishing and, and these memories, uh, the bigger their hippocampus gets. It gets so big that pretty much it can't hold anymore. And it sort of has this backflow problem. So if they go on vacation, they can't make any new spatial memories. They're kind of full up. Um, so that's one, one problem. There's this other, I've got a friend who studies these things in relation to post-traumatic stress disorder. And the sort of current operating theory is that it's a problem with, the with that hippocampus, that those cells think you're in some other place that you're not. And that's kind of what's triggering this disorientation. And there's some solutions. There are foods, berries very specifically, all different kinds of berries are really good for your spatial memory. And there's this idea that perhaps it's kind of a co-evolutionary thing where they maybe gave us navigation to help themselves spread throughout the wild. Um, another way for another sort of potential solution is just like off offloading of the stuff. And yeah, maybe sci-fi style, but you know, really like our phones are, are already doing this, or even if you had to look up a route of somewhere you've never been before, you know, on the internet back in years ago. So the you are here, this idea of a point, we're no longer really talking about points. Um, really, the you are here is kind of a stretched out line. And that, that all of these points, you know, I think probably it's an obvious statement, just that, that the world and the geoweb is moving towards like time and, and uh, stretching these things out. Um, and so with time, you know, things sort of fade away. And, and, but we need to think maybe beyond just okay, here's like a date stamp for when that place doesn't exist anymore, right? This venue is closed. 
So basically, just as we move forward into these, you know, integrating time and, and linear kind of thinking for, for places, um, we, have, we have some directions we kind of have, you know, something to look at. We don't have to just reinvent the wheel.